Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Friday the 26th of June. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise. Amen. Psalm 38 Rebuke me not, O Lord, in your anger, neither chasten me in your heavy displeasure. For your arrows have struck fast in me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no peace in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Their weight is a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and brought very low. I go about mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain, there is no health in my flesh. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I roar aloud because of the disquiet of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me, the light of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions stand apart from my affliction. My neighbours stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snare for me, and those who would harm me whisper evil, and mutter slander all the day long. But I am like one who is deaf and hears not, like one that is dumb who does not open his mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no retort. For in you, Lord, have I put my trust. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, let them not triumph over me, those who exult over me when my foot slips. Truly I am on the verge of fail falling, and my pain is ever with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those that are my enemies without any cause are mighty, and those who hate me wrongfully are many in number. Those who repay evil for good are against me, because the good is what I seek. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. A reading from the book of Job, chapter 24. Why are times not kept by the Almighty, and why do those who know him never seek his days? The wicked remove landmarks, they seize flocks and pick pasture them. They drive away the donkey of the orphan, they take the widow's ox for a pledge. They thrust the needy off the road, the poor of the earth all hide themselves. Like wild asses in the desert, they go out to their toil scavenging in the wasteland food for their young. They reap in a field not their own, and they glean in the vineyard of the wicked. They lie all night naked without clothing, and have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the rain of the mountains, and cling to the rock for want of shelter. There are those who snatch the orphan child from the breast, and take as a pledge the infant of the poor. They go about naked without clothing. Though hungry, they carry the sheaves. Between their terraces, they press out oil. They tread the wine presses, but suffer thirst. From the city, the, di the dying groan, and the throat of the wounded cries for help. Yet God pays no attention to their prayer. There are those who rebel against the light, who are not acquainted with its ways, and do not stay in its paths. The murderer rises at dusk to kill the poor and needy, and in the night is like a thief. The eye of the adulterer also waits for the twilight, saying, No eye will see me, and he disguises his face. 
In the dark they dig through houses, by day they shut themselves up. They do not know the light, for deep darkness is morning to all of them. For they are friends with the terrors of deep darkness. Swift are they on the face of the waters, their portion is the land in the land is cursed. No treader turns towards their vineyard. Drought and heat snatch away the snow waters. So does shale those who have sinned. The womb forgets them, the worm finds the sweet, finds them sweet. They are no longer remembered, so wickedness is broken like a tree. They harm the childless woman and do no good to the widow. Yet God prongs the life of the mighty by his power. They rise up when they despair of life. He gives them security and they are supported. His eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted a little while and then are gone. They wither and fade like the mallow. They are cut off like the heads of grain. If it is not so, who would prove me a liar and show that there is nothing in what I say? reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets, they have demolished your altars, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life. But what is the driving divine reply to him? I have kept for myself seven thousand who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So too at the present time there is a remnant <coughs> chosen by grace. But if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise grace would no longer be grace. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. The elect obtained it, but the rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a sluggish spirit, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear, down to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and keep their backs forever bent. So I ask, have they stumbled so as to fall? By no means. But through their stumbling, salvation has come to the Gentiles, so as to make Israel jealous. Now if their stumbling means riches for the world, and if their defeat means riches for Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? The Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and a holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Today in the church's calendar is marked as an ember day, a day when we traditionally pray for those who are discerning a call, those who are preparing to train to be deacons and priests in the Church of God. And this weekend we pray for all those Across the country who in other circumstances would have been ordained as deacons and priests this weekend. 
we pray for them in those feelings of disappointment and anticipation and we pray for them as they look forward to ordinations in two or three months time we give thanks that women and men are continuing to seek the call of God upon their lives we pray for all involved in their discernment process Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as government and bishops' permission is given to open churches again for public worship, so we give thanks to God for this decision, for this opportunity. We pray for ourselves and all churches in the coming weeks as we adjust to being able to be together in some form for worship again. We pray for patience, for understanding when things are different. And we thank God for the opportunity to worship as the body of Christ. We pray too for those who for different reasons will not be able to be together with others at worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for God's world, for that world in all its richness and colour and diversity. We give thanks that God gives to us so much. And we pray that we will be filled not with a spirit of criticism, but with a spirit of appreciation of thankfulness for all that we are given in the world, for all that others are doing for us. Remembering that we have the supreme gift of life and hope itself through God in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, that true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.